Welcome to I'm Your Target Demographic. This video is going to be a recap of an event that happened at the UC Riverside campus where I work uh, and I was able to moderate an interview with actor Jose Pablo Cantillo. Um, he has been in things like Sons of Anarchy, Walking Dead, uh, Crank, Elysium, Chappie. He's been in a lot of things. Uh, so we brought this actor out and I was able to interview him uh, and it was spectacular. He's such a great guy. Um, so I thought it'd be cool to maybe pick a couple questions that the world might be interested in uh, and share those here. So we're going to cut to my logo and we come back, you're going to see some highlights from the event Unscripted with Jose Pablo Contillo. Hey there! <laughs> Adam's the best! So we're going to sit, we're going to talk. I've got some questions that I... It's good to see more. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're just going to talk. I've got some questions. This is totally casual. And then when we're done, you all can ask questions that you have. Um, and then we will do a signing and pictures and whatnot afterwards. Questions uh, for Adam as well. Yeah, you can ask me questions. <laughs> Tell us about your experience on Walking Dead. What was that like? Um, you kill a lot of zombies. I did watch some clips. Ooh, zombies, yeah. yeah. It's um, fun. Yeah. So when you talk about Walking Dead, maybe some, some anecdotes and stories, and maybe sure. your favorite zombie kill. Uh, let's walk backwards. Let's say it's tight because of the, the favorite zombie kill definitely was um, episode 13, season 3. Do you, do you remember, for those of you that have seen the show, um, Martinez does this, um, sorry for the YouTube channel, but it's like this pissing contest with what Norman Reeves' character. You can, you can say pissing on YouTube. <laughs> uh, yeah, like this pissing contest with, uh, with Daryl, who has the coolest, best zombie kill, right? Walker kill. And if you're from Woodbury, you call him Biter, it's the Biter kill. And I have my bat out, which uh, Janice says, eat me on it. That's why I wrote eat me. I wasn't trying to be rude. It says, eat me on the bat. And so I'm swinging this bat around, and there's a zombie that comes up, or Walker comes up. And I go and I, I, hit, I hit her with one hand. And what's cool is um, her head, by uh, special effects, uh, visual effects, said, okay, so they take the bat and they cut it, by the way, in half, right? They cut the bat in half. And so I'm winging it around and I, boom, I missed this girl by like two feet. But what was cool about it was that I would put it into the side of the silo and then it got stuck. We had this this cool uh, concept because of the way I did it. I was doing this thing, and I was like, boom, and out of the safety for the uh, stunt woman, I didn't want it to bounce back and hit her, even though it was short. So I, I let it stay in bed in, in the silo for a moment, and they had this idea, like, hey, what if it gets stuck in her head? Oh. And it splatters, but it gets stuck in there for a second, and then you have to wrench it out. And um, that was cool because, you know, Three months later, they go and they color it. Six months later, it actually comes out, and uh, and I had forgotten about it. And then when I was watching, I was like, "Oh, whoa!" You know, <laughs> that was neat. So that was my favorite zombie kill. <laughs> so this this brings up a bigger question. Um, as a Latino male in Hollywood, is it difficult? My <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Is it difficult to find roles that aren't the criminals and bad guys and like? Is that difficult? Um, yes, it is actually. Um, I don't know what happened. Like I was in New York and I had to go sign up for the Screen Actors Guild, and I was such a good kid, a, a, a 
coming from the Midwest that you see names. I didn't know you get to pick your name. That there's a, such thing as a stage name. You know? um, I just know that if you get if you want to get paid, you have to put your real name. So I put oh, it's a Bob Logan Dio, and um, and then I, I did Law and Orders. I did, did a couple of Law and Orders, and I started to get to know the directors pretty well. They started having me come back, and and it felt like okay, this is it, you know. And, I was going to San Jose. I grew up as Joe Cantillo. I grew up as Joe, you know, from Indiana. And um, played tennis, you know. Um, I wasn't Jose. So I don't know if, if it would have mattered, but in New York, it's like the first five roles I played, I was, I was this criminal or villain. And I have a name, Jose, well, Jose Pablo Cantillo. You know, and I'm playing uh, Juan Gonzalez Ramirez, blah, 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 who's the criminal of the night. And I feel like, yeah, that I think that had something to do with it, you know, what goes in a name kind of thing. Um, and I did too many of them in a row, you know. And I say too many almost as if it's a regret. It's not because, you know, getting, earning your living from acting or being an artist is the ultimate dream for me. And, um, and, I, and I, I'm very appreciative of that. However, I've, I've had moments where I go in, and like I played this gay astronaut, uh, so a Fox series that was very, very, very neat, and it was a, it was a fun character to play, and it didn't, it didn't go. The show didn't go, um, but it seems like I'm always considered for the rough criminal, villain, murderer, drug dealer, or and I, I do think I have something. The short answer is yes. I think I have something to do with being Latino or the gay character, which I think is it's really interesting that. Um, because it's just, but um, you know the doctor, the lawyer, um, those characters. I haven't played a lot of them. I just know that when I'm up for them and I test for them and uh, I get very close, I know that I'm not having as much fun. You know, I've played characters who are like uh, I played a doctor before, and there was a character that would have been like me who comes and takes the whole place hostage, and I was envious. Because there's that, he's driving, oftentimes I find that the, the villain actually drives the action. And the hero has to react to everything that the villain is doing. And the hero is more heroic or a better, more compelling hero only by how strong and how far he's pushed by the villain. So the better the villain, the better the hero. And I had to, you know, uh, we, us non-criminals, like the heroes of the story, we had to react to everything that he was doing. He was leading the dance. And um, so I guess, you know, the grass is always greener. You know, I, I want to play other types of characters more for my kids sometimes, because my kids haven't watched anything I do. And um, my six-year-old still asks me what I'm going to do when I grow up. But I just know that when you do play those, those those other type of characters, uh, those good citizens, it's not as fun. I don't know. So those were just a few questions that we asked. It was about a two hour event, so we couldn't cover everything. But I want to thank the Associated Students Program Board, ASPB, at UCR for inviting me to moderate the conversation. It was super fun. Uh, probably one of the coolest moments of my life so far. Um, and that's it. So make sure you head over to Facebook, like, our page at uh, facebook.com slash IAYTD. And thanks for watching.